Hey, Nick, welcome to the podcast. Hey, buddy. Thanks so much for having me on here. Yo, man. Uh, huge honor. You know, we were just I was re- messaging back and forth on Instagram about your most recent, uh, not most recent. That was actually a while ago. Uh, the picture about the the dirty Jordan, Jordan 11s and how, you, oh, yep, how yep. you framed it. It was really dope. So um, I just love that you were able to to capture so much in such one in like one picture, which was just crazy to me. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, for people who aren't uh, familiar with you, how about you introduce yourself? So my name is Nick Wilson. I'm a photographer. I work uh, currently right now at uh, Rejuvenator. So if any of you guys know anything about Rejuvenator, uh, we sell sneaker cleaning products, and I'm their full time staff photographer. So shoot all of the photo content that you guys see for Rejuvenator, and then I also freelance and work for a plethora of different brands and companies and people on the side. I don't know if you could see the big pile of <laughs> hats yeah. and crap behind me. I'm shooting right now, right in the middle doing that. So this is for, uh, for a brand right now that they're launching a new clothing line. So, but, uh, yeah, I'm a photographer, shoot lots of different things. Um, kind of, kind of a little bit of everything. You can follow me online at uh, underscore, underscore, Nick, underscore, underscore, Wilson, underscore, underscore, because we are super extra <laughs> with making sure you definitely can't find me anywhere on the internet. <laughs> That's on uh, Instagram. TikTok is Nick Wilson Photo, Twitch.tv, Nick Wilson Photo, and YouTube at Nick Wilson Photo. Damn, you, you're 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 plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> On all the platforms. All the platforms. Get it. <laughs> you want to get Snapchat? I got Snapchat too. Hit up Nick Wilson Photo. I hardly get on there, but I'm on there one too. I got all of them. Yo, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're more plugged. I thought I was plugged in with the podcast. I thought I wasn't doing too much. And now I know that I'm not doing enough. <laughs> Make sure you follow us online at Rejuvenator. Head yeah. over to YouTube. Follow Rejuvenator. And Instagram, Rejuvenator again. Uh-huh. That's R-E-S-H-O-E-V-N-8-R. Rejuvenator. Hey, use the use the code Nick at check yeah, out. Uh, it actually it's an, it's Nick W. Uh, really, if you want to get down to it, save yourself ten percent. Save the ten percent. Ten percent off rejuvenator products. Hit that link in bio. I mean, listen, I'm working my way to get at least one <laughs> one promotion on this Let's podcast. <laughs> so, if you like your, we I see we are both using the blue snowball microphone. If you mm-hmm. go ahead and hit my link in the bio for my Amazon referral, there you definitely go. hit that up and buy yourself the blue snowball mic. <laughs> Especially if you want to be an episode on this, if you want to get an episode on this podcast, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah, give me my one dollar. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're here to talk about, or you're here to get the question that I ask everybody each week, and that is, what's your first kicks? What's that first pair of sneakers you absolutely needed to have? So the very first pair that I um, like absolutely had to have when I was a kid um, was the uh, Kestel Daredevil. I used to call it Kestrel. I was on another podcast last week and I mm-hmm. called them Kestrels. I'm sorry. I said it wrong. <laughs> you, you just school me and we found it together. We found it's it together. Yeah. Kestel, uh, <laughs> Kestel or Castel, uh-huh. Castel. Yeah. Castel, Daredevil. Um, it was like one of the very first all synthetic skate shoes mm-hmm. that was, uh, that came out and they had a big, big thing about it in the mid 90s mid to late nineties, all about being the first, um, like all fully synthetic skate shoe Mm -hmm. at the time in my life, I was really big into animal rights and animal cruelty. And I was learning all about like anti-vivisection and Mm -hmm. PETA and all that kind of stuff. So coming from wearing like Chucks and regular Converse and whatever the skate shoes at the time coming from the skateboard background, it was really a, a big, like a big thing, you know what I mean? And we were like, being more conscious at the time. And I think it was probably like in fifth or sixth grade at that time, um, being more like conscious about what you're consuming and what you're wearing and what harm are you doing to the planet and the environment and animals and stuff like that. So that was like one of the very first pairs that I like absolutely like begged my mom and dad, I need $40, please. I want these shoes. Like mine are already falling apart anyways. And I, uh, I absolutely beat those things mm-hmm. into the ground from, I mean, I, the last thing I can remember with them things like I had like toes poking out, completely ripped off like the midsoles, <laughs> wow. the whole toe box was gone. Uh-huh. I mean, I just, I really like just worked those things into the ground and then went to go buy another pair and they were like, yeah, now nah, we don't have them anymore. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, well, had to I, mean, to get, I had to go to something else. So yeah, it's, it's very interesting because especially back in, back then in the nineties, when 
uh, learning about animal cruelty and all that stuff. It's just like it was it was such a brand new thing because everybody thought. Like, oh, yeah, you know, we're good. Like, everybody's had, like, you know, you're, we're getting the food we're supposed to get. Like, how are we supposed to get it? And, um, yeah, that rise of just, like, con- like, like l- being conscious of what you're eating and, and uh, like, how processed food is and stuff like that. Like, uh, to, to lead to a skate shoe, because I didn't even know about this, because I thought, like, growing up, a lot of shoes were just non-vegan or, you know, non mm-hmm non-plant basis <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i just thought i just thought like it was just like there's no other way around it well besides like converse's because converse was just a canvas shoe so yeah. like yeah like being being brought into that i mean like i've had i've had the air vegan on the podcast so like he was giving me more wealth of knowledge of like you know more current times but we didn't really talk about you know how veganism like it impacted uh more than just the food you eat or like, oh yeah yeah you know like i think that's just just uh it's weird because like people don't really think about it beyond like beyond uh food a lot and i think more recently like i would say like the last like five ten years more recently it would be like oh yeah you gotta walk you gotta wear you know hemp clothing you're supporting mm-hmm. you know you, you gotta do uh what you can so yeah i know yeah. It's very, yeah, very back in the yeah back in back in the heyday for sure. I was definitely made sure that you know every brand that I purchased and every product that I supported or company that I supported, I made sure that they're on like the cruelty free list. I made sure that even if like the pants that you're buying, they're not made with certain animal product or animal byproducts. Same mm-hmm. with your shirts and like you know I wasn't wearing. I mean when I was younger younger and really first learning about it and i went real hardcore about it i mean it was like yeah no 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 wool no silk no leathers no suede's you know and nowadays i'm not as obviously hardcore about it as i used to be i mean i'm definitely not out there um you know kicking down lab doors or anything <laughs> um you know travis scott's like, you're like <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you know i mean there there's still there's still a lot i mean the from the nineties until now, I mean, as far as mm-hmm. like animal cruelty and animal rights, it's definitely, we're not where we need to be, but we're f- way, way ahead of oh, yeah. where we were back in the day. So, yeah. But wow. nowadays I just, you know, I don't, I don't call myself, uh, the V word anymore. Mm-hmm. I just say, <laughs> I, I consume a plant-based diet, so I don't consume any animal product or animal, any animal byproduct for my dietary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do, you know, I wear, suede leather and all those other kind of things so yeah i get i get that (laughs) um like i'm very curious about what got you into skating and that skate culture and how far did you get within that so when i grew up um skateboarding was like almost like second nature i don't know if you have ever seen the movie kids Mm -hmm. AIDS from back in the day. Not a lot of people have, so not a lot of people know about it. But like when I grew up, when I was growing up, that when like that movie came out and it exposed me to like that whole subculture and like that, all that, the music and the Mm -hmm. style, I was just like, what? Like, what? This is, this is the dopest thing I've ever seen in my, like it was mind blown. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, then like I just picked up a skateboard. I was probably like first, second, 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 maybe first, second, somewhere in like the first to third grade range. Wait, you saw and, uh, kids at like yeah, dude, that young, young? Dude, <laughs> man. That movie is crazy, you. man. Dude, and yeah, and yeah, and then turn that movie into life, and dude, yeah, crazy girl, crazy life, just <laughs> nonstop. But but uh, yeah, then I uh, just started skating, just like regular, like push around the neighborhood, and then like you know started learning how to do tricks and stuff, and then where I grew up they built a skate park right next to the YMCA. Uh, it's in, it's in Phoenix called desert West. Um, and, uh, yeah, once, once that skate park got built and opened up, it was every day of my life. I mean, sometimes we wouldn't go to school. <laughs> we would just go to the skate park and hang out all day and skate right back, like leave school, mm-hmm. literally leave school, skate right to the skate park, drop your bags off and skate until like someone's mom would roll up at like nine o'clock at night and be like, what you guys got to come home, like get out of the park. Let's go. <laughs> and then uh yeah and then just like just hanging out at the skate park all day you know skated a couple like local competitions mm-hmm. didn't like do good or anything didn't go anywhere with it and then um 
you know, that, that opened up my eyes to photography, videography, mm-hmm. music, like all the different subcultures of skating and like all, like, you know, from the punk rock kids to the hip hop kids to like, and like how sometimes they like mesh together and were mm-hmm. chill and sometimes they weren't chill. And then all the different fashions and, and all the different genres of things that it was just like, you know, they're the dudes that like did it for the sport. There's the dudes that did it for the fashion. There's mm-hmm. the dudes who just like did it to look the, the part and, and all kinds of different things. Um, and, and, it, and that was like my life up until, I don't know, probably like, I once I like, I got a job, mm-hmm. I think like 15, 16, and I started like working and I was kind of like, all right, you know, I'll push around on the weekends. Even now, like, I mean, even just on my birthday a month or so ago, me and my daughter, they built a skate park right behind our house here. And we went to the skate park. I post on my IG, it's hitting a little pump track and like mm-hmm. skating around. And it's like, Ooh, man, these 40 year old knees ain't got a leg <laughs> I used to, but I can still do it. I, I still, I, I put us on my Instagram. I can still Ollie. I can still yeah. kick flip. I can uh-huh. still heel flip. I can still pop shove it. I can still Ollie nollie like 180. So I was like, all right, like I still kind of got it you a got, little you bit. Got the, you yeah. got the foundation still. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can still do <laughs> some manual. You can do a regular manual, do a nose manual. You're not out no, here going to be, you know, <laughs> dark sliding and. and no, 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 no. I might hit like a two or three stair, like Ollie down it, uh-huh. but that's going to be about it. <laughs> that four yeah, stair, you're like, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> that's, that's too far. Yeah, that's too much. That's too high. <laughs> yeah. Did you, so you lived in Phoenix all your, your mm-hmm. entire life. Yep. What, what is the sneaker scene uh, growing up like that? and or growing up around there so when i was younger i wasn't actually like, into what we would consider like the sneaker scene now mm-hmm. personally um uh, my sister was and i watched my sister go and like grow her collection and she still is to this day as much as she can she's got a she's got two boys she's got a 15 year old and a 23 i think he just turned 24 actually oh. so um she's obviously buying stuff for them but like yeah like she kind of introduced me into like the sneaker scene and sneaker collecting. And, you know, she'd always do like the, the camp outs overnight and wait in lines and stuff. When I was younger, I was just like, I don't, I don't know. What are you doing? Like, just go to the store and buy the shoe. What are you talking yeah. about? What? And, like, it didn't <laughs> click with me. You know what I mean? When I was like in fourth and fifth grade and she's like, no, dude, like I got to get these new 11s that are coming out and I got to get these breads that are coming. And, oh, you know, the space jams are dropping. And I was just like, all right, cool. Yeah. Those look great. Love it. Awesome. I need to, I'm worried about skate shoes yeah. at that point in time. So like what we consider like the sneaker scene today, back, back then, I really couldn't tell you just because I wasn't as ingrained in it as I am over the last like five to seven years Mm -hmm. so much. But I mean, nowadays, I mean, we got new stores opening all the time. The 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 resale scene is just like (laughs) skyrocketed. We don't know how long though, because yeah. It's yeah, starting we'll to see. slow down. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, I mean, it's funny you got... said that too, because my bad, but uh, it's funny you said that too. But I was literally walking um, to walking home and I always take this route and I like pass by. I'm like, is this a new brand new? They literally opened a brand new resale shop. And I'm just like, how, are we like getting out of all these <laughs> shops opening? <laughs> yeah, there's wild. like, I, I think in the last year alone in Phoenix that I can think of, I can think of five new stores that opened in the last year. And most of them are like within a mile to three miles of each other. So it's crazy. And like we got, um, you know, a lot of probably one of the bigger ones out here is Common Hype. Yeah. I don't know if you know who Common Hype is. Yeah. I follow them on YouTube. Yeah. So like Common Hype, they just, they had one store and then they closed that store down to open up a huge store super mm-hmm. huge super nice beautiful store and then now they opened a second store in the mall and then we have another a couple of chain of stores here called soul play mm-hmm. um and like he's opening up store. he's got a store in like almost every mall now i think he's in four different malls and he just opened up another one like at the mall right down the street from over here to us so he's expanding and moving around all the time and then there's another another big one rerun which rerun is like always that's wilson and now they're the homies too but like they're getting ready to open up a second location now and it's just like crazy in the manner manner is one of the bigger they're not even a resale store they're just a, a, like a jordan brand nike new balance etc like retail store they're mm-hmm. opening up their second location right down the street from us over here too so i mean they're expanding i mean everybody's kind of expanding the sneaker industry is they say sales are going down but like also you know i think for like the more mom and pop kind of mm-hmm. shops and stuff people are going to go 
and have the ability to go to the store still still exist. I mean, like I would much rather like walk, go up to Manor if I could get it. Like, you know, they do first come first serve releases and they do yeah. reservation releases and all that kind of stuff. Um, in more fun ways, like their lost and found drop was like a, a, an amazing, cool thing that they did. But like that keeps the community more tied back in together with it mm -hmm. um, versus what it has been over the last couple of years. So I think moving forward, we're going to see a lot more of that kind of community involvement versus just, yeah, we're getting the shoe come show up first come first serve or, or, you know, come in the day before grab a raffle ticket, drop your name on your, on it and we'll call you if, if you're going to get a pair. So like, yeah, I think the, I think definitely over the next couple of years, we're going to see, we're going to see a little bit of a drop definitely in mm -hmm. how much and how frequently people think they can just quickly flip every release. Uh, and it's going to turn back into more of a, you know, you'll have more and more pairs sitting and, and things that aren't going for what they are going for currently at the time. Mm -hmm. And the values are going to drop and then things that are going to drop and come out and then they're going to go and they're going to be selling for less in retail more so than they are now moving over the next probably three to five years. Yeah. Personally, I, that's what I feel. I mean, I, I totally agree with you on that too. I think, you know, a lot of the people that got into reselling, it was more during the pandemic. And I think that just spawned a lot of this entrepreneurship into opening stores all over and over again, but they don't realize that, you know, sneakers always had an ebb and flow when it comes to stuff like this, it comes to reselling, there's always going to be a height of it. And then it's just going to dip crazy. And it's the people that last out through the dip into the back For of sure. the, the next whenever, I don't know, Bad Bunny wears some crazy SBs or something <laughs> like that. And then now they're like, OK, we're back up. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what was so? Yeah, we were talking about shops, but what were you, some of your like home skate shops? Like, did you I, I mean, I want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like back yeah. back in the day, we, um, like the number one shop I used to hang out with uh, was an industrial it's called industrial ride shop. And then they got bought out by like a bigger corporation. That's just called industrial. And they kind of went mainstream. Um, and there was another shop, um, did, did before your friends go like, nah, man, he sold out. Like not sold out. Shop 100%, no yep. mm -hmm. <laughs> nope, not at all. Uh, so that was like the closest one to us. And then there was, a a Vans, mm -hmm. like it, it was like a van store, but it's not like what you know of like a van store today. Like you'd walk in and it was just like, you know, loud punk rock music playing and just mm -hmm. like, crazy people like behind the counter working and like that's actually where i met um this girl kate and this guy mike 808 mike or 808 skate and they were like I, like those two are like what really introduced me into like sneakers and fashion and music and stuff i was like this is a little f fourth grade like stupid kid like it was just, like walking in there and i was just like whoa like what's going on in here you know mm -hmm. um and then like still to this day there's they're, they're still around which is sidewalk surfer sidewalk surfer is like your your haven of like cool stuff to go to. And then also Cowtown. Cowtown's still huge. They like, I remember they were blowing up. I remember like when Cowtown dropped like their first VHS, like sponsored rider tape. And like, we all like got one copy and like yeah. passed it around to each other, like watching it on like on our little 13 inch TV. So like the VCR built into it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I stuff. So those. like, <laughs> you know, yeah. So like Cowtown, Sidewalk Surfer, they're mm -hmm. still around to these days. Industrial, I have no idea what they're, I don't go and do it anymore. Cause nowadays you see industrial and it's not, at all what it was mm -hmm. um same with vans like the vans here at our mall metro center mall they actually built a skate park in the mall whoa off the van store too uh -huh. yeah so that was like super cool to like to be able to like roll up skate in the mall get all your stuff the one time the security guards can't throw you out for rolling <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah you know? <laughs> oh, that was shot, <laughs> well so that was the thing is like you literally yeah. would, we'd skate through the mall and stuff to get to the skate park and stuff back in the day mm -hmm. States still get all pissed off, but yeah, it was fun. That was like, dude, like that was like golden era days thinking about memories and growing up. Yeah. I mean, we talked about before the podcast, uh, the D3, but what was, cause I had somebody talk about the D3's impact in the UK, but what was the D3 impact around you know, your social circle? Uh, so the D3, dude, the Osiris D3 is like the, was the shoe. Like that was it, if you guys think pandas have a chokehold on the <laughs> counterculture society right now, dude, uh -huh. D threes, I want to say it was like sixth or seventh grade and everybody. And I don't care if it was a girl that had no idea about skate skating or anything else. She'd show up to school one day in D threes, 
the other dude, like even like, you know, everybody, everybody from every like subculture, subgenre or whatever mm-hmm. was always rocking the D3s. And the D3 was like the first big chunky skate shoe that came out that would everyone was like, oh, dude, chunky skate shoes. That's the thing. That's we're going to we're getting yeah. rid of these. And now we're going to go into like the big DVSs, going to the big S's, going into the, the like a lot of the Americas too. like they stayed kind of like slim line. But like that, the Osiris D3 is like what I think of kind of like launched that big, fat, chunky, like Thick laces. Oh, like, let's yeah. go, dude. Yeah. How fat can we get it? How what extra <laughs> 17 extra eyelets? Yeah. How, how big is the tongue? Can we have, oh, don't lace them up. Just leave it loose and sloppy looking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like that was like, that was like the turn, I think, <laughs> from where like, then it just got even more into like, let's get, let's just go down the wrong path. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I remember how crazy everybody was wearing DC, like the big, the DCs, uh, black and white with the, the DC in white. And then the whole mm-hmm. shoe was black. And I don't know, like, for some reason for me, I'm just like, I'm like, no, man, it just looks like you're wearing like a Ninja Turtle shell. Like, you got it. <laughs> like, that's not, that's like, it never appealed to me, like, in terms of skate shoes. And, and I really like skate shoes, but like, I love the D3 when it first dropped. I remember, um, I'm a big Bob Burquist. Like, that's oh, who nice. really got Let's me go. into, into yep. it, uh, into skateboarding was watching him and being half Brazilian. Like, I was just like, this is my guy. Like, he was the first, <laughs> he's the first in my head. He was the first br- half, uh, he was the first Brazilian that I've seen in a sport. So I was like, immediately like, oh, I love skateboarding. And so and that's nice. what got me deeper and deeper and deeper into it. But yeah, I remember just trying to find his first signature shoe and no, like, I didn't know, like, I lived in deep in, in this area in New York called Queens. Um, and so I lived like, so deep that there was the, the nearest skate shop was f- super far. So <laughs> I could the first time I ever been to a skate shop was like 2013. And, and it was like all like all like tw- like no, 2008 was the first time I've been to a skate shop. And then like I, but it took me forever to get to that point. So I missed all the like all the sneakers, all the, the skateboard sneakers. I only had was able to wear like Air Forces and stuff like that. And so yeah, I mean, I missed that whole like I wanted to be part of it so bad. So I just like I would watch like the Birdhouse film over and over uh-huh. again. <laughs> like I, I would watch um not not was it Birdhouse? Uh, yeah, Birdhouse had a bunch of stuff like the old deal four one one video magazines. Yeah. I found it's crazy. I found this uh like a DVD binder. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. Know if this is some of these kids are gonna be like, a, what do you got a binder <laughs> DVD? Yeah, dude. So back yeah, in the day, my day, we had these little discs, <laughs> and you put it in a player, and that's how you watch the movie. Anyways, it's gonna um, be like, like yeah, the, like, the CD, <laughs> you got a CD, uh, HA8 CD yeah. changer in the, in the car. Yeah. Oh, dude, hell yeah, <laughs> let's go in the back in the trunk. That's yeah, how we gotta, did it in the back of the Infinity. The thing in. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. The, yeah. The little cassette stack uh-huh. in the six disc changer. Make sure you turn it to FM eighty nine point nine. Let's go. Uh, but no, I found a whole bunch of the old four one one video magazines. Wow. Uh, on DVD, and I'm like, dude, I gotta like, I gotta find a DVD player so I can like watch these again. Yeah, I'm gonna need. I'm sure you can probably find them on YouTube. Yeah, but I'm sure too. <laughs> but you, I'm gonna need you to make a, a Dropbox and rip <laughs> all of those so I can watch all of them. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about, man. It's funny like that, and like I remember like some of the very first early films. Um, the one that always sticks out to me the most, and even I just showed my daughter, she's eight. I just showed her the other day was the Rodney Mullen vs. Day One song. Oh yeah, that that one, like that one, like always kind of like stuck out to me as like one of the like you know like one of those like pivotal moments Mm -hmm. in my like in brain chemistry like you know moments that change your brain chemistry the little tiktok trend that video (laughs) really like because i was just like i've never seen somebody so technical on the flat ground as rodney was and then day one just even today day one still just like does these crazy flip in manny flip out tricks Mm -hmm. you know flip in grind flip out just crazy technical crazy te- technical ability stuff so like that was like yeah. growing up watching those guys i remember seeing they want to hit the dolphin flip and i watched that video <laughs> like i think a thousand times nice. like <laughs> because it was just the most craziest thing i've seen and i mean like i remember watching tony hawk hit the 900 like w- waiting for it to happen <laughs> during the x games and stuff like that but yeah that was just it was absolutely yeah. wild um, to see. Real quick, let me flip this battery <laughs> back on. Um, it was crazy. It was absolutely wild to see that, though. 
Yeah, I remember when uh, when he did the 900 the first time. Uh-huh. And they were going for it and going for it and going for it. And nowadays there's like kids just pumping out oh, yeah. 900s. Like, it's like, oh, cool. I got 900. You're like, dude, I remember like when 720s and stuff were huge. Nowadays these kids are doing Sean rodeo White flips. Was going for the 1080. Yeah. And on and, the snowboard. Yeah. On, on the, uh, <laughs> the vert, the snowboard competition. What did he do that in the Olympics or was that the X Games? No, I think that was X did, Games. Did he hit? I think he hit it. He might have hit it in Olympics. I too, think he also hit it again. But when he did the first 1080, I think it was the uh, X Games. Winter, Winter S Games. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sean White just retired. Dude's crushing it. I mean, yeah, that like that era of skateboarding, which I don't know. I don't know much about. Like, I know like I keep I stay current. Right. With like, I love King of the Road. I don't know if you've watched King of the Road. Um mm-hmm. Oh man, you would love I've, it. I've seen like some like I don't like yeah. stay up to it or whatever. I've watched a couple episodes of it, but like yeah, I don't like religiously watch <laughs> it or anything. <laughs> I mean I mean I don't even know if it's happening right now, but I think like trying to stay up with the current how how people got into how people get signed and, and sponsored now is a lot more it's a lot more nuanced versus like before you just Oh, who, he's got a board or oh, there's a video like, you know, that's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's it's totally it's just it's just I mean, but it's also like the skill gap is just crazy. Across oh, yeah. It, everybody it's, now. it's crazy. Yeah. Like I remember like speaking about like getting sponsored and stuff like, you know, we would all like skate down to like, you know, like a, the local grocery store or whatever and like get a magazine, you know, like a thrasher. Or what was the other? There was a couple other ones back. Uh, oh, like Big Brother. Dude, oh, Big Brother. Dude, Big Brother was yeah. like when Big Brother came out, dude, that was like our like that was like our counterculture. Like that was our like F you to to the big boy thrasher. You know what I mean? These guys are so corporate. We're big brother bros. Let's go. <laughs> kind of stuff like that. But um, you know, <laughs> you get that and you go home and you like see the skate videos in there, and you'd be like, Oh, all right, that one, like, that's cool. And like mm-hmm. tear out the page. And like put five dollars in an envelope and mail it off, yeah, and then like three <laughs> weeks later, a VHS cassette would show up, and you'd like be watching these videos and stuff until like Cowtown started really like stalking a lot of like skate videos and stuff. Mm-hmm. But like same thing is like that's like you would watch these parts in these videos, and you'd be like, oh, okay, like this is so and so, he's an up and coming guy, and like a lot of like the the other skate shops and like other small skate brands that were coming out back in the day, mm-hmm. they would like have their own, their own videos of like all these different guys, you know, like when like Deshaun Jordan and um, man, my brain is like going blank right now. He wore <laughs> the OG 95 neons. Uh, uh... <laughs> yeah. I cannot think of his name right now. It's like literally I can see his face in my head right now. I can't think of his name right now. Um, but like I mean, same thing, like you know, me. you know when he uh, like same thing, like you know his first couple video parts came out. Mm-hmm. You, you know, um, man, I cannot think of anybody's names right now. My brain literally just went like meltedly blank. Um, <laughs> but, but same thing, like you'd watch these video parts and you'd be like, it's oh, not "Who's Jamie this Coy. guy?" No, no, that's no. nowhere. Yeah, no. Let me see real quick. I'll tell you real fast. OG Air Max ninety five ninety ninety seven. 95s? I thought they were the 95s. Uh, 96. No, the 95s. No, 95? it was the 95s. The OG 95 neons. Oh, dude, who? There's a picture of him and he's like alling over. Why can my brain. Dude, as soon as I say his name, we're going to be like, oh, yeah, duh, we're so <laughs> freaking stupid. Couldn't think of his name. Not Kareem Campbell. Kareem Campbell. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Is it's it? Kareem Campbell. Cause he skates everything now. That's the name I was going to say. And I was like, ah, you know, it's not go. That's probably not it. Let's see. Cause now nah, I don't mean, I, let me see. Like, I can see, I, I can see the picture in my head mm-hmm. wearing the, the Air Max 95 OG neons. Where is this at? I don't got it. Oh, wait, let me see. No, this is it's right there. There it is. You found it. Stevie Williams. Stevie Williams. Stevie Williams, dude. Yeah. So 
A, if you don't know about Steve, he's got a bunch of great podcasts all about his story mm-hmm. and an amazing story. Um, but yeah, so this was, I don't know when the original photo was taken. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of pictures of him skating in the Air Max 95s. And like, I remember like when those photos first dropped out, we we're all like, what? He's skating in Air Maxes? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. But like, it's kind of the same thing. Like you'd watch these video parts yeah. where you like look at these guys in the magazines and then like progressively you would start seeing more and more stuff rolling out in videos and print magazines. Mm-hmm. And nowadays it's just like, yeah, these dudes are out there or snapping stuff on their phones or whatever else, you know, or even nowadays with like cameras and stuff. You shoot it and it's up on the internet in yeah. an hour, two hours, you know what I mean? Or sometimes right away. So right. Immediately, like that, sometimes it's just literally they just put something up and now yep, all 100%. Of a sudden, sk- skater of the year. So <laughs> <laughs> which I mean, I don't know. Did you see that uh Tyshawn, the Tyshawn spot in the train station? Uh that's how he won skater of the oh, year. Oh, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just just posted that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. I think it's, over the through yeah. the subway, dude. No thanks. That's I mean, too I, sketch. I, I mean, if you did it, it looked like some. It looked like some Tony Hawk pro, pro skater stuff immediately. <laughs> but but if he did it while the train was like about to come, uh, no, oh my god, no way, dude, no way. <laughs> yeah, now I just need somebody to do that and superimpose it in post, make it even <laughs> sketchier than it is. <laughs> I mean, okay, now you just gave me an idea because I can go to that spot. <laughs> And I could take that picture, take that I, same one, and, and then and just then superimpose boom. it in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just Photoshop blend mode. <laughs> Look what he in. did! Oh my god! Blend and then just made, fall, fall, fake news everywhere. And I was like, that, <laughs> "That's it, yo! You really just ollie with the train right there? Yeah. Oh my god! Um, how much how much clickbait reshares can we get? <laughs> <laughs> Tag the podcast in this. It's Let's little, go! See, right that's there, how you do. That's marketing. Go. There you go. I did it. <laughs> and I, <laughs> um, I, so like you know, you you're talking about how you. Wait, actually, what what was your transgression into like doing your photography now? Like what what like what started you going to this route of like, oh, I'm gonna take photography seriously? Um, well, when I was younger, I first got a job at a, a pawn shop mm-hmm. and I was they had an eBay store and they were like, hey, we need to start selling stuff on eBay and we don't know anything about cameras or computers and you're like the youngest one here. Here's this digital camera, Mm -hmm. figure it out. And I was like, Oh, like, all right. Like, you know, I had was taking photos and videos and stuff with like regular film cameras or like Sony, like high eight or VHSC camcorders, like Mm -hmm. with skating and stuff. So like, I kind of had like the photo background, if you will, from that side of things. And then I just kind of like picked it up from there shot all that stuff for them just as like, this is my job. Didn't really care about like photography would just be like, all right, like, yeah, I come to work, take pictures of these eBay things and move on. And then throughout the years and like with jobs and working, um, and then just my own, like finding a passion for photography Mm -hmm. and like shooting things that I was shooting and like into, and just wanted to like capture it and share with the world. Really when Instagram started kind of like really blowing up, when they first launched before that was like Flickr. I don't know if you remember Flickr or not, but like, and I remember (laughs) photo bucket. I'm here. I'm here with you, man. Come on. We here. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. So like photo, so we like would go in the photo. So like we'd hit all the forums and stuff. And like that, I mean, I didn't want to like get so far back for people. I know what I was talking about, but like, yeah. So all the forums going back, we always go back. So like, (laughs) yeah. Right. So like coming from my background, coming from like automotive side Mm -hmm. of things, that was where I really got big into photography. Cause I was working for an automotive shop. Mm -hmm. Um, my mom and dad had a Harley Davidson dealership and then I was into like low rider cars and custom cars and stuff. So I always wanted to like have cool pictures and stuff of those cars. Um, and so I just like bought a camera, like a cheap Canon, whatever you could buy, like Best Buy for $199 Mm -hmm. and like, just put it on the auto mode and go shoot stuff. And then I was like, you know, really wanted to learn more about like, how does, how come that guy's picture looks like that? Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anything about it because I didn't go to school or anything. And I definitely didn't take a photo class, that's for sure. So I just like started asking questions and learning. This is probably 16 through like 20-ish or so. And then I started learning like about what different cameras can do, what the different lenses do, what aperture and shutter speed and ISO and all that fun stuff. And then from there, it just boy, it turned into... I don't even know what you would call it. Just was like, it it was all consuming, all encompassing. 
I mean, it was like an addiction. Like I just literally every free minute I had, it would be learning about cameras and gear and how do how do I make that and how did that guy shoot that? And then I started shooting for a, an automotive shop here, doing all of their like um, product photography, their all their e-commerce stuff, all their marketing materials. I started out like I look back now and like this was 20, 2004, 2005. This is almost 20 years ago now. Mm-hmm. Like thinking like, oh man, like I know what I'm doing. I think it's so cool. Like I took these cool pictures and this is all off-road stuff. So like in the sand cars, going out to Glamis and like taking pictures of like the sand rails and the dune buggies and trucks and stuff like that. Wow. And then like, just like essentially getting on the forums, mm-hmm. posting the things to photo bucket, bringing it over to the, the forums and like, having people see the photos and see the work and then like seeing people being like, Oh, this is so great. Then I was like, Oh, I like, I want to like get better at this. And I want to like take cooler photos and better photos. And then from there it's progressed into, I don't even, this, I don't even know what this, this is these days. It's, it's a hundred percent all encompassing life. I mean, like, I don't like to call myself like a, like a content creator necessarily, or even like, I don't even really call myself a photographer anymore. Like, cause it's, I'm not just a, like, I'm not just a photographer. Like, this is just what I do. Like, this is, it's my job, Mm -hmm. but it's also my hobby, but it's also like, it consumes my entire world every day. Like, even if I like, as crazy as it sounds, sometimes like I'll look at a, a new release, you know, to keep it sneaker related. And I'll be like, all right, if I get those, how could I shoot them? How could I capture them? How could I show them off? How would I do this? How would I do that? And then it boils down to, am I going to wear it or do I just want to shoot it? And there was a while there where I was literally just getting stuff to shoot and then would just sell it or trade it off for something else just to like shoot them because I wanted to shoot them, but I didn't necessarily want to wear them. So, so yeah. And then it just, I mean, for over the last 20 years, it's been learning. And even today, 20 years later, I'm still learning every day. You're never not a student. That's the cool thing about this game. You know what I mean? The second you think you know everything, you should probably stop doing it because there's always, always a new thing to learn. There's always a new way to do something. And within this community of like photographers and creatives and whatever else, it's super cool because I really share a lot of my process of things and how I do things the way that I do them. Mm -hmm. because when I was younger and I was trying to learn and figure out how, how did that guy get that thing floating in the air of this, of the shot? Like it didn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Nobody would tell you back in the day. I mean, oh, everybody yeah. would, you know, it was big just so gate, gatekeepers yeah. and like, Oh, I'm not going to tell you how I do this. Cause then you're going to go do it. I'm like, yeah, ex- exactly. I want to go do it, but I'm not you. So I'm not going to do it the same way you do it. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so nowadays I'm more on the, like, open communication, open book. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of creators and creatives don't talk about all of the things that go on behind what you see in front of the, you know what I mean? You know how it is coming from the podcast. Like, you know, all the back end work that you have to do Mm -hmm. just to get a podcast episode up isn't just, I press record, I pressed upload and I walked away from it and it does what it it does. I wish right (laughs) now. So it's like, trying to even like, ex, you know, and show all those processes mm-hmm. and explain to all everybody, because if, if I made the mistake and I had to learn from the mistake, I would much rather tell everybody that will listen to me to not make that mistake. Right. So that way, when they get to that step in whatever journey they're in, they can now not make that mistake Mm -hmm. and then hopefully they can continue to grow above and beyond wherever they're at and then if they make a mistake and they share it with the community then i can hopefully not make that mistake and then we can all continue to grow because at the end of the day everything's ever changing in this realm of content creation if you will from the photo side of things video side of things ugc short form long form blogs youtube Mark, you know, commercial photography. I mean, the mm-hmm. biggest thing that I work on really is like commercial side of things, which is for like marketing materials and e-commerce right. photos, product photos, stuff like that, that is more designed to like sell the product mm-hmm. and, you know, and show product usage. Um, but yeah, so like, I, I don't know how I got from 
16 year old Nick getting held this Sony Mavica Mm -hmm. with a three and a half inch floppy disc that held three photos on it to (laughs) having multiple studio locations and so much crapping gear that I don't know what to do with half the time and (laughs) telling people you don't need it, but then I use it every day. So I don't know. You don't need it, but like it makes your job a lot easier if you have it kind of a thing. So yeah. I mean, listen, if you have a couple red cameras, I'm not, I wouldn't be mad at it. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like, you don't need it. You could right. film it on your iPhone, mm-hmm. but it won't necessarily look the same way. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it's, we're, we live in a world where content is so easily accessible, but people don't really think about what goes into making it. They just think, oh, yeah, you could just put it together. But, like, there's so much thought. If For, for somebody who's trying to do it differently than what, is supposedly the uh the the what people are saying the the right way you know or like the most clickbaity way um i think it i think like you know the way you work is is something that does not happen in any aspect of life in my opinion because (laughs) i think it's a lot of people uh i mean i I would take the term of like a lot of people don't want to be big brother they just want to just move on with their life and just keep going but I'm also about like, I mean, we talked about it before. I think it's just like if we continue the circle of helping each other, then the people that want to be the people that want to help or receive the help or feel that you're helpful also will feel the need to also help the next person as well. For sure. You know, I think, 100%. That, I think that like a lot of what is on the Internet is very negative and and. And that's what people think people pull towards, too, of like, oh. I just got to be negative and then I'll get the likes or when somebody says something negative to me, I should be responding to them. You know, like I've always taken the approach of just like, you know, and and this podcast as well. Just like this is all about positivity. Like we've have, you know, people have bad experiences, but they don't dictate the way stuff needs to really happen. Right. You can just take that. Tell somebody next time, yo, watch out for this. And then. They'll have that in the back of their mind. If it happens, you'd be like, okay, I remember when so-and-so told me. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I think it's, it, that should be a, a life lesson. But I feel, I feel a lot of people are a little bit too hard headed when they hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, spreading the positivity is, as, as, um, whatever the word is, I can think of to, to what, you know what I mean? Like, don't want to be like, you know, trying to think of like a PG way to say it, but like, <laughs> I mean, As a father, he, 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 oh, you know, I mean, like people are like, oh, don't be like such a bitch about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, you know, this is that's not what we're about. You know, mm-hmm. you can't fucking spread positivity, you know, whatever else. But it's like, no, I mean, like life's too short, man. You know, I my daughter's getting older now and same thing with her. You know, what I mean, you, you you listen to the things that these kids are saying to each other and all the things that they're seeing on the Internet. And I try to explain to her all the time, like, dude, if you only bring in the bad you're only going to put out the bad because that's what you see and you're consuming. And so trying to always make sure that even all the stuff that I put out, I always try to be as uplifting, positive, happy all the time, just because I want people to see happy. You know what I mean? And same with her. It's like, go do something good today. Go Mm -hmm. be nice today. If you see somebody having a bad day, go give a guy tell every day, every morning when I drop her off at school, it's just like, you know, have a good day. I love you. Be nice. Help somebody. Compliment somebody. Every day, those are our like top five like things that we say at drop off because I know if she goes out and she tells somebody and she's really good on it now, but like give somebody one compliment, that person will hopefully go and compliment somebody and that person, you know, and then it just snowballs down and hopefully we can build a, a better community and, and life of happy, nice people. No, yeah, I think. Uh, when I was at ComplexCon, uh, I ran into a person who had, I forgot the name of their booth, their clothing this clothing line, but they, they had a shirt and I, I bought it instantly. I, I was like, I had to buy it because it's a model that I always live by, which is Positive Mental Attitude, PMA. Mm-hmm. PMA, uh, let's yeah, go. PMA is, all, is like, I love PMA and I think it's, it needs to be spread out more. Um, it's, it's something that like, I mean, listen. The world can be dark, it, like you know, it's hard. It's a hard to be like you know, at every turn. Like when you look at something, it can it can be like, oh man, this is dreadful, right? But uh, uh, w- being happy or being positive, it it could seem hard, but uh, once it comes to a point in your life where you can just go, 
all right, man, you know what? Like, we're, I'm tired of being upset. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of like, you know, I could just turn, like, can I just turn this on? Can I work my way to make myself feel more positive? And it all takes just like those little steps, just being a little bit kinder, being a little bit nicer, helping somebody out. Like, you know, for sure. Like, yeah. You know, so yeah, I love, I love, I love, I've always loved your message, man. Like, I love that. I, lo- <laughs> I, I love that. The, I love that you, you spread the knowledge as well. And because a lot of, listen, photography, I think photography, because I took photography and I mean, I, I went to school for print. That's, that's what my degree is in. And obviously, print is dead. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm here making a podcast. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I had to take for, for photography. So, um, it, the idea of, I think what r- r- people really don't understand is that nobody can see what you see. And I was telling my friend this the same way, cause he, he also felt that it was just exhausting to put content out, to make, to take pictures and put them on. But I'm like, I'm like, you got to understand, right? It, it can seem like a daunting task just to put up a picture you took, but you took the time and you saw what you saw. So just let everybody else see what you saw too. And I think a lot of people don't understand or they think that oh somebody else is doing it better than me right now but if you just put it if you just put your if you just think of like you know nobody everybody's unique and i think that now we live in this world where everybody feels they're the same or they have to be the same that it kind of like drenches down and pushes you down from being like oh yo my thought is my own thought Mm -hmm. yeah i mean coming from the like especially the sneaker side of things i mean you could i we call it um, I call it a cookie cutter content. Mm-hmm. So you will see Tyler Mansori, a rab Lincoln. I'm sure everybody knows who he is. Mm-hmm. He's works for Kith. Um, and he's shot for a bunch of other brands too. Anyway, but like his style and what he sees is what he sees. And then everybody just kind of copies it because right. they see that's what is kind of going. Um, and trying to always keep a fresh look and like a fresh outlook and a, like a fresh, style if you will and something different has always been kind of like what i've always achieved to try to do because Mm -hmm. i i don't like my style will say is like i would call it clean and crisp Mm -hmm. if you will you know what i mean so it's like really yeah you know what i mean so concise and to the you're you're a sniper is what i I, like (laughs) Yeah, because like, like I to not to cut you off again, but like because uh, AD AD uh, Andy Andy Dunn, mm-hmm. I've had him on the yep. podcast. He does he does uh, what I would like to call abstract in terms of mm-hmm. just like he'll do like the sneaker above his head. He'll do right. like you know he'll he'll take like something out of context and put it into the frame. So I I think it's more of abstract. But you are very like. Oh, now nah, you're going to see this dirt or like, like <laughs> you know, or like you're like, nah, this shoe is going to look very like you you have like even even a dirty sneaker in your in your eyes ha- looks clean is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, so, I appreciate yeah. that. Sniper. Sniper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, that's like my style of things. You know what I mean? And then like but like I don't I'm not going to gatekeep how I did all of this. Mm-hmm. And if anybody wants to go and do it, go and do it. Go for it. Like I. I'm not getting like, I'm great. I would feel, I don't know, like, okay. Like I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? It's Cause it's like, I want people to ha- use that as a way to build their own style, if you will. You know what I mean? Cause not every, not everybody, what's the word? How can I say this? I'm not talented, right? Like I'm, I don't have no, I have zero talent. I have no. knowledge. You have talent. And I have experience <laughs> and I can take that knowledge and that experience uh-huh. and take the foundation blocks or the things that I know or I've learned and build it into whatever it, whatever it is that we're going to create. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, if I'm being a hundred percent honest right now, 95% of the time, I have fucking no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> I just start. I have, I just start and I just go. And but, then, but I think in a creative <laughs> capacity, that is where people thrive because when people, cause like for me, and I'll tell you, because I have the opposite, right? My shit, my shit is like, I have a vision and if it's not as close to the vision, then it's all fucked up. Like it's not <laughs> right. Like you don't know, understand how many times I've designed something and I would be like, nope. And then I'll just delete it. And then I'll design. And then it, it comes to like, the 15th edit. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care anymore. And then I put it out. 
And people would be like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I was just like, no, man, like, it sucks. Like, <laughs> like I, I feel that. <laughs> so I, I, I definitely feel that deep. My uh, motto is I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. Like, yes. If, yes. if I can say like, mm, I don't hate it, then I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll probably get posted. <laughs> but like a lot of the times I'm just like, yeah, now that's straight deleting. Just delete it, get it out of my life. I don't ever want to see it ever again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because I was, I was asking you, like, oh, you got to save some of these pictures. And you're like, nah. No. And they're gone. I was just like, they're what? Gone. <laughs> yeah, deleted. It Bye. Like a, a, a coffee book table would be sick of your pictures, yeah. man. Like, and that, I mean, the thing is so hard these days because we consume content so quickly, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, if I was to post the same five images like so like i just did my like my my 2022 like recap top 10 of every month that i shot right so i posted 10 images from every month that i shot for the last year it's like 120 images we'll say you know what i mean right. so it's like even those like there might be some of my favorite but would i ever post them again other than that maybe maybe not you know what i mean mm -hmm. because you're, we're always evolving and we're always looking for what the next thing is. And I don't, maybe it's just cause I'm just, I don't want to say like jaded, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of like jaded to it now after so many years. Cause it's just like, everybody wants the next thing. What's the next one? What's the next project? What's the next drop? What's the next release? What's the next video? What's the next this? What are we going to do this time? What do we kind of, okay, we built this, we got to here and now we have to get to here. Okay. Well, now we're here. Now we got to get to here. Took what we take, what we learned from here and do it again and do it again and do it again to where it's like, I don't even like, I can't, I can't even think I don't know if you asked me or somebody else asked me like, what was like, what was like one of my favorite photos? And I'm just like, I have no, I couldn't I've, even tell I've you, I've asked, taken, I've never yeah. asked you that. <laughs> it's like, I, that would be the, the I've worst taken question to ask you. 100,000 yeah. million photos in my life. I have no idea. That's the, the only photo that ever sticks you, out man. is, is it's like, I have photos that are meaningful and impactful to me. Right. Just yeah. like I have sneakers that are meaningful and impactful to me, mm -hmm. but like in the realm of super cool clicks, thumb stopping, amazing, crazy technical ability photographs. No, some of them are the most literal I walked outside and I pressed the shutter button and I just happened to capture a moment. You know what I mean? Even some of the ones that like people would say like, you know, what's your most profitable image? You know what I mean? It was literally a photograph of two brothers at the start of a race line. They were fist bumping and I just caught it at that precise moment. Mm -hmm. Boom. And, and like that photo blew up a couple of years ago. I mean, it was, it's not a technically hard image by any means. You know what I mean? It's a natural light outdoor portrait. But you just, I, I happened to see that moment and I was the only one that thought to look and stand and right, take, take that photo. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, and then like, as far as moving into like the technical side of things, some of my very technical, very labor intensive photographs that are like, you know, 30, 40 hours to capture one end image that you see that you scroll right past in 0.3 seconds on Instagram took me 40 hours of work to do. I post it once. It doesn't get well received. We'll say on in the ether world of the internet. Mm -hmm. And then I just go, Oh, all right. Well, it, it is what it is. Move, moving on. All right. Well, I'm not, it's they didn't, they yeah, didn't, they didn't like it today at Monday at 6 15 AM. When I posted it, it's obviously trash. Mm -hmm. I'm trash. I should probably throw my camera away and close my computer and never do this again. And then I tell myself, okay, fine, let's just go to the next one, you know? And then that's the, that's the content game we play nowadays. I think it's been Instagram over the course of the last eight to 10 years, I think has been a blessing and a curse, um, a blessing for me because I've, I've got to build a great community and meet everybody like meeting you today mm -hmm. um, and meeting guys like Andy and meeting all of the thousands of people that I've met that I, that I continually uh, communicate with and, and have relationships with are I've all been, even to this day that I currently associate with, I've all been built off of social media and, and Instagram and stuff, mm -hmm. but also as a creator and man, it really like, it cuts your, cuts you right off of the knees. A lot oh, yeah. of the days, I mean, there are things that like I'm super proud of personally and I put out there and then it just gets 
absolutely shit housed on the internet. You're just like, <laughs> all right, well, that that sucks. <laughs> okay, what am I gonna do now? Right. Well, and just then, know uh, that, yeah. that I appreciate your work, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, then just then just move on to the next one. Nah, and yeah. sometimes, you know what I mean? It's like I over the course of the years, I've learned more not to worry so much about for my personal side of things, work side of things are completely different because that's your job and you have to you have to perform for your job. And that's that's literally the job description. But like right. my personal side of things, this, here, okay, here the easy way I can say this. I can post an image on my page and it could get 50 likes. It could get reshared on another page and get 50,000 likes. Right. And so it's like, sometimes you can't gauge all of the work or how well you are as a creator or an artist based off of what they see when they see it and, or what Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whoever decides to roll out to through the algorithm at that point in time. So I know we kind of got like way sidetracked on whatever we were talking about, but no, this is still, <laughs> we're still on track. <laughs> yeah. So um, like, yeah, as creators, just heads up, like don't, don't throw your camera away because you got 10 likes on a photo. All right. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Like if you're happy with the work, keep working, keep, exactly. keep making it, keep putting it out. Yeah. Don't Tyler, don't the creator defeated. said it. The, exactly. Tyler, the creator said it best when he's like, you spent that time, you spent that energy, you made that. Be proud of it. Be happy about it. Post about it. Promote it. Talk about it. Keep sharing it. So, yeah, I got to get mean, better at it. Yeah. Uh, listen, it's all it's all steps. I think I think goldfish memory on the Internet is good. Like that's 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 what I thrive on. I thrive on. <laughs> I don't I don't go back to any of my old stuff. I just be like, all right, it's up and that's it. Like, let's keep it moving, <laughs> you know. Um, but as we end, as we go to, towards the end of this podcast, I ask another question. And that question is, what would you tell your younger self when they opened that box? The first box? The first box. Oh. Buy another pair before you can't buy another pair. <laughs> the, of, the, <laughs> of the Castells? <laughs> of the Castells, yeah. Because once that one pair was done, I couldn't get them again. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, back in the day, I was just so wrapped up in my own little world. Mm -hmm. If I went back and told my fifth grade self, like, just keep skating. I don't know. I don't know. That's a, that's a really good, that's like a deep, that's a deep question. I don't know what I would tell myself. Cause there's, there's a lot of stuff I'd go back and tell myself. Yeah. Damn. I don't know. <laughs> That's a deep. That's a deep question. It is. It is. <laughs> I would have. Yeah, I'd. I'd have to think on that one to be honest. Yeah, come back to me on this one. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff I would tell myself if I could go back to fifth grade and tell myself some stuff about what's going to happen in the future. I'd mm -hmm. tell myself, "Go hug your mom." Yeah. Go tell your lover. For sure. For sure, man. Yeah, I appreciate you jumping on, Nick. Uh, for everybody out there, you know what we say every week: wear your kicks. Peace.